now, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to uh, stump our, audi- our panel, <laughs> please feel free. Well, I, have, uh, I want to make a comment uh, on Dr. Abayi's speech. Mr. Laganikas? Yes, thank you very much. I want to make a comment regarding the speech made by Dr. Abaya, spe- specifically the Christmas slide. Yeah. I can tell you, <laughs> though not necessarily directly medically related, but if you count the number of seafarers whose contracts, for example, may end sometime in January, around December, they will uh, have a combination of fatigue and uh, threatened illness, and in more cases than one, you will find a very large percentage of them being repatriated. I'm just saying this, I'm not saying it's directly medically related, but it is the truth that we, and it's we have. Only for Filipinos. It's for and yeah. that we have learned to face uh, or not face or deal with or not deal with uh, through the years. So. Um, can I, can thank I you. make a response to that? Yes. Quickly. Um, I we have found that when you deal with the issue, even someone who is trying to perhaps feign an illness, we do get these cases. And Dr. Baya had a case today where someone's pain in the leg moved to the foot, and after asking a few specific questions, the pain went away. We do see that when you're vigilant, and people know that you're there, and you're not just someone who's watching over them, trying to you know figure out that they're, they know that they're safe and they're comfortable, but they also know that there's someone who's qualified to watch them, that even these incidents, I believe, tend to be reduced. It may be, because this is the communication with the office. It is. I'm telling you, it's not maybe. It is, <laughs> because we've seen it happen. Vivian, if, yeah. I, if I can add, um, all the gentlemen refer to MLC. MLC, which, well, Title IV MLC, which is a uh, relatively new thing, for us in shipping, Um, whereas it has the right motivation and probably the right framework, has already been used on occasion, and I think there's a lot of examples among uh, Greek ship owners and others, I'm sure, has already been used as a tool by crews and those around crews, whether they're manning agents or others, to create uh, pressure towards the ship managers and ship owners for early repatriations and or whatever else that may bring with it. I just say this because we are subjected to a constant uh, a constant strain of new regulation, most of it, as I said, well motivated and most of it well thought out and properly, properly written, but usually very poorly or, or selectively um, enforced. Um, but it has provided one more tool of pressure towards ship managers and ship owners. It's not only now, oh, I have a pain in my leg which went down to my foot and really I don't have it and it's at the end of my ear. <laughs> now, it's, now it's I have a pain in my leg and by the way, by the way, if you don't, if you don't send me back, I'll tell everybody that the uh, pinball machine doesn't work, the pool is not clean, the gym doesn't have all the free ways it should have, the TVs are not color and there's, not, and there's bad reception on my radio. I hate to put it bluntly like this, but this is what we have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. It's way beyond the realities and the the actual strains that we have. Um, We all talk about having a holistic approach to what we do. It'd be great if we could. Sometimes we just can't because there are tools out there used by many stakeholders in the business for the wrong reason at the wrong time and with the wrong recipient. I want to comment on that, and I I empathize with all the ship owners who have these issues, and they're real issues. Um, To clarify our program, our physician advisors that are located geographically within all the world trade lanes and are available to be patched through to the captain, when you come on our Caring for the Crew program, you also advise your key officer uh, and seafarer that you have the Caring for the Crew program but they report to their captain. When they report to their captain any symptoms, the way the program is disseminated is that your captain will deal with your symptoms with instructions from a physician. Our physicians are trained occupational medicine physicians. 
And what that means in training for a doctor is that their key job, besides helping to bring somebody to maximum medical improvement, is to keep them working. That means they are not Pollyanna good hearts. That means they do their best through testing, diagnosis, sometimes conferring with each other. But our doctors that are hired by you are your private occupational physicians. And I can tell you that there are many instances where they tell the captain, stand down captain, no need for rest or light duty, yeah. crew member able to work. We stand by this through medical documentation. So one of the other reasons that we feel a private force service with a doc by your side is so important is because nothing goes on in our world without medically documenting what has occurred. And this becomes a record that is utilized for minimizing claims, for studying statistics, and for most importantly, letting the crew member know, a doctor said you're okay to go back to work. Or a doctor has said, yes, you need to rest for three days, we're going to monitor your vital signs. And in many instances, as we monitor day to day at sea, we see the progression of health occur, and the doctor releases him fit for duty. And you, you can't deny someone, you can't deny someone repatriation, we know that. And if someone wants to be repatriated, that's the, that's the he will be repatriated. However, he could be, we, you have documentation in your hands saying a physician has reviewed the case and indicates that if this man wants to be repatriated, you can't hold him back. But there are no medical reasons for his Vivian, repatriation. Vivian, I'm with you all the way. Our justice in the club will probably tell you this is great, but when I get sued, it doesn't matter. But I think that's the end of it. I, I hate to say it, but that's the reality. I, I just, I think, I mean, I, I believe in what George said, because every regulation always starts out really extreme, and we're going to see the worst part, and we all have to comply. Um, but eventually that comes down. But I think we need to look at, at the bigger picture, and I think what Future Care is trying to say, although we cannot stop it, no, um, at least we're medically, legally documented, and documenting that the ship owner is doing the best on behalf of that crew member. Therefore, if it does go into litigation exactly. later on when they you are repatriated, the you have that medical trail. Exactly. And also, you may be able to mitigate some instances, because exactly. one avoid avoidance of a deviation of a vessel of a repatriation can save a lot of money. And, and George was definitely spot on with the fact that there's multiple little cases. So I think also Future Care's bigger picture is that it's these little cases that can be prevented um, and that are also documented. And, and they it, don't get exacerbated. Right, exactly. Yeah, for all this to happen, for all this to happen and to, for a vessel to be able to take advantage of telemedicine, they need to have a kit like that or similar to that or exactly that on board because they need to have it before. Because if they're in the middle of the ocean, and then they want to do something like that, they cannot do it, right? So are you saying, yeah, this is it. Uh, Yes, I think that the kit will make a great baseline medical record. We don't usually go on board with our ship owners and their crew with a baseline medical record. In many instances, such as in China, they won't share their PMEs. In the US, the unions won't share their PMEs. So when a crew member comes on board, we have nothing to start except when he first gives us a symptom. But, but there, but, but, but there are other ways. Obviously, not every ship owner is going to buy one of these kits. Yes. Oh, so that's our, what I wanted to say. Sure Thank you. Owner has the kit, but we've been doing it other ways for very long. Okay. So the way we're doing it now, and it's working fine, is that the the ship owner is, if it is not an emergency, he's emailing a request that a crew member is complaining about a symptom. He's trying to describe the symptom in writing as best he can. And since we have a 24-hour call line with everyone observing the emails, rather than ratchet up all the phone calls for every little thing, we're answering emails immediately to the captain and beginning a diagnosis question and answer and period. Right, but but also, the, the call line that's been utilized for the past 10 years has specialty physicians, so it's not like the old um, telemedical that you just use as a general public one. Now you're getting on the line and the initial first responders mitigating that, deciding what's the expertise that needs to be on the line and getting that expert physician on the phone, and maybe that is going to do a little more.
more than having nothing at all is, I think, kind of the bottom line. Because, you know, George is right, we don't have that, and we don't necessarily have all the pre 